The costumes in Shogun were all handmade. The material um, was selected by the art department working uh, with the wardrobe, and uh, they were all made to order for the actresses and uh, even the extras. The Japanese armies of the period uh, did not have uniforms, but we had to tell a story, and you had to know this side and that side, the good guys and the bad guys, and so we had to develop uniforms because the Japanese of the period, their armor has a little tube on the back of the shoulder plate, and there's a little wand that goes in there, and it has a little flag, and it tells who you are and what you do and who's the sergeant and who's the captain and everything, but it's all written in Japanese. So we had to develop uniforms, so to speak, so that we could tell one side from the other. Our primary audience was television, and there's just so many people you can fit on a television screen. I mean, in those days, the biggest TVs were, what, 30 inches, 25? You sort of lost them. And uh, they had built a wardrobe for thousands. The kimonos that Richard wore were gorgeous. They were works of art. They were made out of pure silk. They were uh, just incredible. Shin Nishida uh, was our costume designer, and he was also a historian. And after the costumes were all designed, he became my painter. But he had a World War II leather aviator's helmet. When he put his Snoopy hat on, everybody knew that Nishida-san was really getting ready to paint. Why he did that, I have no idea. But all of the downtime that he was going through, it finally began to dawn on me. He had a mental image that was literally pasted to the inside of his forehead. They would build these fabulous sets, and they would build them like they were going to last forever. We tend in America to build sets that look good on film, but you know, don't last more than a month past shooting. They build sets like you're building a structure that's gonna last 100 years. But they didn't know how to age them well. And they always, everything looked brand new. And it just didn't look right on film. We'd, we'd try to find artists, or scenic artists, and painters who could come in and age sets. It was a concept they didn't really understand. When the Japanese paint, they paint realistic, beautiful, new now, but they didn't want to age it. So we, we brought in a, an American painter who was able to take those beautiful sets and age them, put the crackle in them and the cracks and the aging. It was like he rode out of the West with, with two blazing spray guns. And he could do, in 20 minutes, what it generally took the Japanese set painters to do in a day. And they were just in awe of this man, who could come in and paint rust on sets and paint water stains and make things look old. And they really revered him. By the time he left, they threw a big the art department threw a banquet for him. They were just in awe of what the talent that this man had.